What is going on guys out there in the world of uh, Facebook? Uh, let me share this out real quick. I'm going to give you guys the day two rundown. I'm finishing up my second day here at Warren Buffett's annual meeting. If my uh, laptop act up, acts right. One second here. There we go. Share this out if you're logging on. Let me see here. second I was trying to put this on my regular page all right my name is real quick if y'all know a better way of doing this definitely let me know I'm just documenting this Boom, there we go. I'm gonna post it there. Um so all right. So one of the big things I want to say, this is day two, finishing up here. Not finishing up, we got one more day here uh, here in Omaha, Nebraska, at Warren Buffett's annual shareholders meeting. Today what went on? So today I got up pretty early. Um I had uh, you know, special passes and stuff like that to get into the event press passes or whatnot so they had a designated parking area for us in the back of the uh in the back of the actual venue so went into the back of the actual venue finally found the parking spaces we went through the back of the, the venue itself went all the way up they had us in the press box uh way up at the top of the uh, actual arena let me sh don't forget to uh, share this out as well. If you are tuning in, my my computer here on this uh, in this hotel is pretty slow. So the second thing I did was so we get in there, we go up to the top and we sit down in the press box. In the press box, it's an area where a lot of um, journalists and companies like Morningstar, companies like Motley Fool, news organizations, stuff like that. They sent out their teams to uh, cover this event. So you go to the press box. Um, they serve food, and it's a whole laid out. It's a suite. And essentially what it does is that it's a place you can go to. You can blog and type and cover the event. Now, in the press box, you can't do any recording or anything like that. You can't record the meeting. The media is not allowed to be recorded. I think just exclusively, you can get it off of Yahoo. Yahoo's the only one that was allowed to uh, record the actual bits and pieces of the meeting. So, what happened was, uh, we get there early, then we go down to the exhibit hall. In the exhibit hall, they kind of gave us a heads up, uh, the press that Warren Buffett was going to be there and that Bill Gates was going to be there, where they was going to be at and what time. So, we had a pretty good idea that where they're going to be at. They do their annual paper toss. They do a paper toss every year. Warren Buffett does. He goes out and challenges regular people or whatever, whatnot, whatever the case may be. So I go down there and I'm in the exhibit hall and I'm standing there waiting and the CEO of Dairy Queen, Mr. John, I don't want to butcher his name, Goner, 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 he sees me, he said, hey Prince, how's it going? I did an interview with him yesterday, so pretty cool guy. And while I'm waiting, I see three NFL athletes come up, Donovan Sue, um, I saw uh, Donovan Sue, um, I saw uh, Steven Jackson, he used to play for the Atlanta Falcons, and I also seen um, who else I saw. It was another Jacksonville Jaguar lineman. I didn't know who he was, but I knew they was all athletes. And next thing you know, um, Mr. Buffett comes in, and uh, Bill Gates comes in, and stuff like that. They're literally standing right beside me. If you look at my Facebook Live, I was able to go live on my personal page. Uh, Bill Gates was standing right there next to me probably like two feet away and Bill Gates, not Bill Gates, but Warren Buffett came in. He was right. It was, it was, it turned to pandemonium. It went from being calm and easy when Bill Gates and Warren Buffett came, 
you know, I don't know what's wrong with the media. I don't, I, I don't get that. I understand getting a picture and maybe getting some video, but I don't know what it's all this. Let me get this close in your face and follow you around for a whole hour, two hours. I don't understand that. Maybe, you know, I ain't at that level yet to understand it. But that's a point that I can't understand. I don't know why you have to follow somebody that crazy. But anyway, so he goes in, he does his uh, paper toss or whatnot right before the meeting. And then what we do is uh, it still was open to the exhibit. So then we went up to the, uh, I went back to the press box and I sat down and the meeting started. The meeting starts off with a, uh, a movie and stuff like that. Then, he, then uh, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger comes out, his right-hand man. They both come out, and they get front and center on the stage, and they, he talks the whole time. He talks about the company, what happened in the past with the company, the current economy, what's coming up, and it's just Mr. Buffett. I'm not going to lie. I was very surprised to see Mr. Buffett talk that long. I'm a guy who runs his mouth about investing. I mean, that's my thing. I used to talk people head off. I used to talk people head off of the phone. They see me on YouTube and podcasts or whatnot. But Warren Buffett, he definitely beat me. I was very surprised that he was speaking that long about investing, dropping gems left and right. Then he opened it up and when he had a uh, live Q&A where they had uh, people who was already arranged to ask questions. So some people came up and asked questions and stuff like that about the company, where it was going in the past, questioning some of the moves he made, things like that or whatnot. So after that, they went to. Uh, after that, they went to. Um, they did a Q and A. We had the meeting, and then took a lunch break. So we took a lunch break, and I, I go downstairs, and ironically, I run back into Meta World Peace, aka Ron Artest, the NBA champion. I interviewed him. His interview hadn't had got a chance to come out yet. People ask me, hey, where's the interview? Because you got to think about it. I'm here during the, during the day. I'm there getting interviews and listening to the meeting, taking notes and uh, recording material. And then when I come back home, I have to go to other events at the same time. Then I need to come back and get sleep and do it all over again so I don't have time to upload and get everything done because I'm only one person. I'm the host. I'm the editor. I'm the producer. I'm the writer, the PR, everything at this current time. But in the future... Maybe I, uh, you know, maybe we can change that. Definitely, Birdshot, if you tune into this and stuff like that, I definitely want to bring uh, more help along with me to take care of that stuff. But anyway, uh, the second thing that I did was I, um, we go down and I run into Metal World Peace again. Um, you know, I meant to remember, yeah, you're right, Chad. I see what he just said. We could change that next year. So right now, I just can't put everything out at one time. So I ran into Metal World Peace again, and I just wanted to tell him thank you for the interview that he gave me. Turn around and it's Ty Lopez. So when I interviewed Metal World Peace last year, some of the people at Berkshire wanted to meet Mr. Artest. So I asked Mr. Artest to go over to meet him, and he did, and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. So we said, we talked a little bit. I ended up interviewing Ty Lopez. As I was interviewing um, Ty Lopez during our lunch break, so, um, as I'm headed back up, I stop at the Duracell shop. Um, I speak to different shareholders. They give me a different insight. Business cards are being exchanged. I meet back up with a couple of CEOs. Uh, Yahoo Finance, what is his name? Andy, I don't know. I can't remember your last name, Andy, from I see you all the time on uh, Yahoo. End up meeting him, a couple of hedge funds managers, people from all over the globe, all over the world, um, as I was going back upstairs, taking a lunch break. So, you know, I take the lunch break, I head back to the press box, and Mr. Buffett gets back out there on the microphone, and he talks the whole time, the whole evening as well, all about investing, all about different stocks, stocks they didn't invest in, stocks that are doing well. Um, I don't want to talk in detail about everything that was going on in the meeting, because I know everything is not supposed to be spoken about, so I'm just picking out the bits and pieces, and I'm going to make a video about the highlights of what I learned exactly out of that meeting the thought process of uh, Mr. Buffett, the way he thinks and the way he sees things and stuff like that. So it's a complete honor to sit in the room and to see, are oh, you right, Andy? I can't, so, I don't even want to try to, I'm horrible with names, I don't want to butcher it. So, <laughs> but yeah, it was a complete honor to sit in that room and to be with the best investors around the globe, the world, hedge funds managers, CEOs, athletes, 
Um, I don't know how many people that was there. I'm hoping I'm not missing anybody that I sat down and um, spoke with. But the most beautiful thing got that whole situation in that press box. I was the only independent uh, media person that was there. So uh, they told me, they said, hey, we usually only allow big media places like Fox and CNN and Motley Fool and Morningstar to come in and do this. But uh, they made an exception for me, which I'm very grateful for. Thank you. And I think it's a very genius idea what they did because you got to think about it. The millennials are watching less and less TV. People don't watch TV as much as they used to. I grew up and my TV used to stay on. I knew all the TV shows. I knew when it was going to come on. I knew when it was going to come off. I don't know when the last time I sat down and watched a TV show, unless it was on YouTube or unless it was on way via social media. So the thing about it is now uh, people like uh, YouTubers and Facebookers and Twitter and social media is so powerful nowadays that that's where a lot of millennials are getting their information from. They're signing up the newsletters. They get their information from uh, social media nowadays. They're not getting their information from the news anymore. Not that much. You know, not like it used to be. So uh, I think it's a very ingenious idea or something you need to look further into and to vet further is to getting, if you want to stay relevant with times, because, you know, you first you get your fan base, but your fan base slowly gets older and your slam fan base starts to die off in the 80s and stuff like that. How are you going to look for the next generation to come along? And social media being such a giant, I think it's a very smart way of them getting that social media piece plug in. So, but yeah, I was the only person there that wasn't with a major company. I went there under my own company, uh, Royal Financial Investment Group, and in the investor show. And the thing about it was, I didn't have big cameras. I didn't have big microphones and a production team. It was me and an iPhone, me and my camera on a tripod, because <clears throat> I didn't have time to break down and follow people and stuff like that. So I think I think all the people that stopped by and gave the little guy a try, and uh, you know, and I definitely want to send the biggest shout out to Ron Artest, Metal World Peace, and uh, Stephen Jackson, and the, I can't remember the guy name from the Jaguars, the line, You know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry about that, but his interview is going to come out as well. But I did the best I can with uh, what I had, so I think it came out pretty well. Um, anyway, um, as we're wrapping up the meeting. I uh, go downstairs and I meet uh, Andy from uh, Yahoo and some of the other great people at Yahoo. And uh, that's how I ended up speaking and on their platform because they have the exclusive rights to the media there. So they get the exclusive footage and stuff like that. So they have a nice little platform. So that's probably uh, some of the pictures you guys saw. But they also... Um, then after that, I ended up meeting the guys from the Investors Podcast. The Investors Podcast is a huge podcast platform. And uh, come, to, come to figure out, they were, uh, you know, they were very intrigued by what I do. And I'm getting ready to go meet them here shortly, right after I get done. I told them I need to come do this video. So those guys at the Investor Podcast, Motley Fool, Morningstar, I met so many people here, <coughs> so many people here and stuff like that. Um... While I was backstage getting ready to leave, and uh, I was sitting there talking to security, and, and boom, I don't know where Bill Gates comes out, and uh, Charlie Munger comes out, um, Warren Buffett's daughter, his son, and Bill Gates, not Bill Gates, but Bill Gates too, they all jump in their cars, and you know, well, they're not driving themselves, the little convoy or whatnot, and they just happened to leave. That was a pretty cool piece, um, and stuff like that. You know, Charlie Munger's still getting around pretty good at 93 years old. And been in the game as long as he has. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the actual meeting, meeting, meeting itself, the lights go out, and it's pretty dark in there, and it's just Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, the CEO and the chairman, they talk at the end, they hold votes, uh, all that type of stuff. So what's coming up, investments they miss, talking about Berkshire in depth. Warren, Bu Warren Buffett even talked about himself, if he passed away, what would happen to the company. Um you know, and he made a very good point. Everybody was like, well, you drinking three Coca-Colas a day and eating steak? And he said, I think about it. He was like, if I eat my broccoli every day, I probably get to live an extra year, you know, two or three years longer. And he was like, if I eat broccoli every day, I might get to live a couple years longer. But he said, if I, if I get to enjoy my life and I die three years earlier, I think it's worth it. 
He said, if I get to eat all the hash browns and steak and live my life how I want to live it and enjoy my life, but I just lose three years off of it, I think it's a good investment. <laughs> so uh, I thought that was pretty funny how he was talking. Because, you know, it, it's notorious that Warren Buffett goes to McDonald's and he eats, he drives himself and uh, he eats at McDonald's and he eats, you know, he loves Coca-Cola. He was eating ice cream while he was there. Uh, he doesn't have the healthiest of the healthiest diet, but up here he's still sharp. He still knows business. He still knows um, Amazon, he's, and he just brought Duracell last year. Hearing about the stock purchases, buying company, I learned so much. And it being in that room, it was a, a a very honor to be in there with you know Bill Gates and the uh, all the athletes. And I, I can't even think about all the slew of people that was there to Buffett to everybody, and just sitting there and watching the best investor of our time and uh, them Berkshire for them giving me that type of access. To them, they had a whole suite out there. They had the food was there. Very nice staff at Berkshire, but they're very quiet and secretive. You know, people know Warren Buffett and they know Charlie, but the people that are around them, people don't know unless you're in the know. And I think that's very genius because his secretaries and stuff like that, they can walk into a room. They don't have nothing to worry about. They can just chill and relax. And they don't have to worry about a pandemonium or nothing because nobody knows who they are, but they get the job done. So I was definitely appreciative of going to the meeting. Uh, what we have on the tabs for tomorrow is, is probably Warren Buffett. And uh, I think Bill Gates is going to be there again. But they're going to go play table tennis against an Olympian. And um, then they're going to have the shareholders dinner at Grot Steakhouse. Uh, back over at Grot Steakhouse, they go there and have an annual meeting and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool as well. That um, the dinner is tomorrow night and then throughout the day, they're going to be doing little activities. So the uh, so today, my night is not done. I still have to go out and meet up with some uh, colleagues at the Investors Podcast. I'll be hanging out with them today. I hung out with two cool guys from Molly Fool yesterday at dinner. Thank you guys for allowing me to come in there because I did not have reservations. <laughs> I was going to be stuck outside if they didn't let me in, but they let me in. They brought me with them on their reservation. We had a nice conversation about investing and stuff like that. Oh, he's talking about get to the 5K tomorrow. Well, getting to the 5K tomorrow, I can see. But uh, with media, they told us what Buffett is going to be at. So that's going to be on the top of the priority list. I may not be able to make the 5K tomorrow, but I need to run the 5K. I don't know if Chad's trying to tell me to run the 5K. I, I do need to run the 5K. But, uh, yeah, he, he's going to be back at the jewelry store, and he's going to be back at um, the, uh, the dinner that night. So I definitely try to get in there and hang out. And uh, get some uh, footage and meet some people there and all that good stuff. But it's an uh, investing extravaganza. And I was so proud to see investing be finally become cool now. You know, it's not considered, um, um, it's not considered uh, to be weird no more. You know, you got athletes coming in. You, you, you got uh, musicians coming in. You have all type of people coming in to uh these type of events or whatnot. So it's pretty cool to see how it's becoming cool, shining light on the world of investing, financial literacy. That stuff is all cool. What's that? Taboo. Eugene, you say taboo. I don't know what that means, Eugene. I don't know what that one means. But uh, anyway, but thank you guys. If you guys got questions or something like that, you can drop them in and stuff like that. Uh but, um, yes, we definitely enjoyed it. We definitely had a good time. We definitely, uh, you know, it was a, a magnificent experience. I got so much footage, footage and stuff like that that uh, it was a good thing. Food was great that they had there. Oh, did I speak about last night on my last? I think I did. I think I did on my. If you haven't seen this one, go to day one. I did a recap of day one which was the exhibit and the cocktail night. The cocktail night is pretty cool. You know, cocktail night is pretty cool. When they bring all this jewelry out, they had a bunch of million dollar diamonds in there. That's crazy. You know, all the million dollar diamonds that was there. Um, and they let me have exclusive footage to uh, go in and um, talk to people with the credentials and stuff like that. So, uh, and like I said, the, the cool part was I, I want to see them do more people like myself instead of the big conglomerates you got the same people there every year and you know you get the fox businesses and you get the the big conglomerate news and you see the same images no 
no diss to news one, but I, I I know her. I took a picture with her. She's an awesome lady. But I and I, I didn't even know her name, but I said I see you every year, and you get the same interview with Warren Buffett as he walks around, and I'm like, well, it's time for it's a new breed coming along. It's new people coming along. It's new platforms coming out. Um, people are going to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and that's the stuff that they're looking at now. That's the stuff that they're big on right now. So. Uh, I think it's a very smart move of Mr. Buffett thinking of the little guys like me, you know, who are there by myself and giving me the opportunity. And um, hopefully the, the material you guys see come out, the interviews and stuff like that, respond to them, respond to them well. You see the interview come out about Ron Artest, a uh, Metal World piece. He reads it on Twitter. He tweeted the photo. Thank you for the retweet, Mr. Artest. I definitely appreciate it. Thank you for following me on Twitter. Um, I, you know, following the investor show at Royal Financials. Now at Royal Financials, definitely appreciate that uh, Metal World piece. And if you guys got questions, you see the interview, reply back to it. He reads that stuff. Um, the other interviews that come out, um, hit the like, subscribe, comment, share button, view it because Berkshire they watch that stuff. And I keep telling them it's an audience. You guys want to see that? You guys will watch that more than you know. Who's gonna turn on the news tonight and go to Yahoo.com and sit there for two hours and just watch? You know, whatever. Versus they can go to their favorite platform and their favorite their favorite investor and get the details of what happened that day. So he said, what happened to your stop crop bro crop? Which one are you talking about? Which stock are you talking about? C O R P. What happened to your stock if it's brought by another company? What you trying to say? I'm not getting what you're saying, Eugene, Eugene. He's asking a question. So he said, what happens to your stock, the company? I'm guessing the corporation is brought by another corporation. Okay, I guess is what you're going to say. One corporation buys another corporation. Um, depends on the merger acquisition deal. Usually, that's what it's called, merger acquisition, if they merge. But if a company buys another company, it all depends on how that deal is orchestrated. Because usually the big company goes down and a small company goes up. Like for example, if rumors rumor mill hits the streets that Apple is going to buy this new technology company, Apple is going to kind of sink a little bit and uh you know the new company is going to rise in stock. Usually that company's stock is pretty much going to what you call it. Oh, he said my family's very oh appreciated uh Mario Evans. Definitely appreciate Mario for all the support out there in Japan. Definitely appreciate it man. I'm um Thank you guys for everything. If okay, Eugene, if you have a stock and it's brought out by another company that has the stock, does that stay yours? Yes, that will be your stock. If you own a particular stock and it's brought out by another company, in majority of the cases, your your stock usually is going to merge over into that company because that company, when they buy a company, that's usually the biggest way they buy a company is by buying all of its stock. It's usually like hey. I'm going to pay you in stock in my particular company. So usually how, how it goes, if it's a smaller company that takes the company, it's going to be absorbed that way. So I, I understand your question. You're probably like, what if I buy this stock and, and somebody buys this company, do my stocks just go kaboosh and I lose everything? No, that's usually not the case. If you're the big company, let's say if you brought this new technology company, Apple comes on and buy, usually your stock value you know, goes up very big. Even if rumor mill comes out of your stock being uh, brought. So that's a, that's a big thing. For a prime example, if it were to come out that Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company, is looking into buying um, some new financial company, Royal Financial Investment Group, and we was publicly traded, guess what? The interest in my company, everybody's going to be like, wow, this must be a good stock. This, why does Warren Buffett want to be with this company? So the value of that stock is going to rise dramatically. Versus Berkshire would kind of slack off a little bit because they buy so many. It's just the way merger acquisitions go. And you had people like John Paulson on The Greatest Trade Ever. That was his job. He was a merger, merger acquisition investor. And that's the way he used to uh, make his money off of that way. He would bet down on one and bet up on the other one on merger acquisition and stuff like that. Not the funnest way of investing, but that's the way it goes. So I hope that answers your question, Eugene, Eugene. I think that's your concern. I get that question kind of often. I used to have that same question too. But in most cases, but every takeover is different, right? When somebody buys a company, every takeover is different. How they, how they uh, uh, 
by that particular company. Take that off of my camera. So anyway, uh, so I got to head out here tonight. Um, as soon as this head off, I'm going to honor a, a, a shirt and go out and meet with some more, more investors and talk to them and um, share this video out. Hopefully I can download it, get up on the YouTube channel before I leave. And I think that's about it. If the video goes off, you guys want to ask me questions, ask some questions. Thank you guys for logging in. This is the Investor Show. This is my new Facebook page, Investor Show. Click here, hit the like button. I know it's brand new. I know you guys probably use the Royal Financial Investment Group, all the good stuff like that. Go get them. That's what O'Neill say. That's what I'm talking about, O'Neill. I'm out here. I'm out here. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I'm still pushing. Keep up the great work. Definitely, man. Appreciate it, man. I appreciate all those thumbs up. Appreciate it. Definitely, man. I, look at that. All the love button, the thumbs up. Are they coming in late or, or what? Man, that's some real love. I was just about to get off live, but I saw that. That made me want to go a little bit longer. So, yeah, Eugene, I hope that answers your question. Um, essentially, at shareholders' meetings, what they do is they discuss your um, particular they, they discuss what's going to be next in the economy. What's going to happen? Mr. Buffett is 86 years old. How long does he have left? You know, he says, yep, coming in late. Okay, cool, cool. Okay. All right, I say coming in late. So, um, so that's some people ask the question like, hey, what's going to happen at the meeting and stuff like that? So that's what you learn. You see, the company talks about the company every single year. They talk about the company. What happened? What's going on? People question. They was criticizing Buffett about, hey, you did this. Why did you do this? This doesn't this doesn't go with this. And you know what? One of the biggest things I, I just hit me, if I get it right, one of the biggest things that I love about what Warren Buffett said and that I would implement throughout all of my business, he said, if you lose money, that's understandable. And I can get over that. But if you ever put the brand's credibility at question. I will be ruthless. That was amazing. I, that that was, and I, and I understood that completely because you have people around you. You say, "Hey, losing money is a part of investing. Losing money, things happen. Market things don't go the way you want to go." I get it, but if you do something scandalous or you rob people, you do something that puts the brand of Berkshire Hathaway at any type of question, he will become ruthless. And what he means by ruthless. He will not just fire you and get rid of you. He's talking about getting the feds on you, get you involved, getting you subpoenaed and perjury and all that type of stuff, getting you in jail and uh, taking your money, that type of stuff. He's saying he'll get ruthless, and that's the way protect the brand at all costs. That's one of the things I like about it. Okay, Chad Davis says, is there a difference between the Class A and Class B shareholders attend attending the conference? Can both attend? Yes. Both Class A and Class B can attend. The only difference between Class A and Class B, Class A is a quarter million dollars, when it's Class B is like 160, I want to say. So it's a different price difference. Class A gets to vote, Class B doesn't get to vote. Both of them can attend. If you do have Berkshire Hathaway stock and you're a shareholder, you get registered, you get press, you're not pressed, but you can get uh, credentials to attend. When you attend, that gives you the right to be there. You get to go to the exhibit hall and see all the different stuff, take pictures with people and stuff like that. And you can go sit in on the meeting. All right. Eugene, Eugene says, what are your thoughts on the Puerto Rican debt? And what do you think is profiting from if who can profit from it? Okay. He's talking about Puerto Rico's debt right now. And who do you think is profiting from it or who can profit from it? So he's looking into Puerto Rico. They're having a pretty big debt crisis. And he's saying who's can profit from it. Um, probably looking for a way to invest into that case. And that one, Eugene, Eugene, I'm just going to have 100% in the event, uh for this time right now because I'm not educated or well enough to give a good response on that one. Um, so I will become better educated on that one and see how I would approach it. So I'm familiar with what's happening in Puerto Rico. But I don't have a particular stance on it that I would take moving forward with investing. So I kind of got to leave you hanging out dry with that one, Eugene, Eugene. I just can't sit here and say, oh, I just get this. No, I have to look at it more in, in detail and get back with you on that one, on how would I approach the uh, Puerto Rican debt crisis. All right? So I got to get ready to get out of here, guys. I got to iron some stuff up, and I got to hit these uh, streets a little bit. 
um, do some speaking and getting shaking some hands and stuff like that, meeting some more people. Um, and these are people that I've been following for years. Okay, Eugene. See, Eugene, I'm not going to BS you. If I don't know it or if I'm not comfortable with it, I'm going to be truthful and honest with you and just tell you. And like, no, mm -mm. I'm not going to be like, oh, well, um, yeah, yeah, about that debt crisis. Yeah, what you need to do is just go ahead and get some gold and get some Puerto Rican gold because it's going to turn around and it's going to do this for you. And yeah, 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 whatever the case may be. So I will say usually in most debt crises, people do go to the commodities like gold. When you have a debt crisis like that, people go to gold. So you could see a rise in maybe uh, some type of commodities because people become scared of the market. If my country is going into debt, you think I'm going to invest into the stock market? Heck no. What is a safe avenue? Use this gold. Oh, Mario say, how does it feel? Um, Mario, I think I had this conversation with me. I, I come to learn about myself over the years. I'm someone who gets a feel from the, I, I get excited from the chase, the pursuit, you know, financially one day I know, yeah, I have money and whatever the case may be, but it's not that, hey, you get this pot of gold and or you now you're here now, so you feel like, oh, I have arrived. I get more thriving of chasing and trying to get there. And so I already know that. I already did that through my life. I was like, man, if I ever get an associate's degree, that would be cool. When I got that associate's, I was like, man, but if I get a bachelor's, it'll be better. And I got the bachelor's, man, but if I got an MBA, that'll be awesome. Then I got the MBA, then it's like, well, if I got these licenses, it'll be cool. Oh, it'll be cool if I had my own company. Oh, it'd be cool if I go to Wall Street. Oh, it'd be cool if I go to Goldman Sachs. Oh, it'd be cool if I go to, um, you know, if I get this internship. Oh, well, I did the internship, but man, it'd be cool if I get to meet Warren Buffett. Then here I am, you know, as you guys saw in the video, Mr. Bill Gates standing to my right, Warren Buffett standing right in front of me. And his company put me there and brought me there with all these athletes, all these CEOs, all these type of people. And now that I'm there, it's just that now, it's just, hey, I got to make it better. I got to be the best one here. So with all these Motley Fools and uh, Morning Stars and Yahoo and all these other media outlets out there that was bringing the content and stuff, I'm just doing the same thing I've been doing for years and years and years and years. And that is learning, getting better, and learning more and more and more. This is my longest Facebook Live video. You guys keeping me up. But let me get out of here, guys. I definitely appreciate it. I appreciate it, uh, Mario. I uh, definitely appreciate everything, but I got to get out of here. All right, guys. Uh, stay back for If you haven't seen day one, go see day one. If you have you checked out day two, then get ready for day three. I'll be seeing Warren Buffett and Bill Gates again. So uh, I'll tell you how that goes with the dinner with them and all the good stuff like that. All right? Cool. To the next video, guys. Take care. And let me get this. There, you're right, Chad. Let's get this business to take care of. Peace. I'm out.